thanks so much, Mickey, for your attending at the kind of job crafting workshop. And we had a number of kind of follow up questions um, that we had. Um, and I'd like to just take some time to ask you a couple of those, if that's OK. Yeah, great. And so the first one relates to taking a more evidence based approach as an organization. So what advice would you have for organizations who want to take a more mm. evidence based approach to, to job crafting, but, but uh, work psychology more broadly? Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough, isn't it? Because I think most people think that they are evidence based. And I think that that is true to an extent. Um, and there's certainly more awareness about what evidence based practice is, particularly in, in work psychology and, and HR. Um, but I guess it's how you ensure that you're taking a measured view rather than following fads and fashions and how you can use good quality research. Um, and I suppose following a true evidence based approach can seem time consuming and overly academic. Um, but for me, it's important to do that to avoid making mistakes um, and spending time and effort on the wrong things. I think there's some fantastic resources out there. So things from the CIPD, the Centre for Evidence-Based Management, and obviously some very high profile academics who talk a lot about this. So uh, Rob Brina, Denise Russo, um, and they have some really helpful guides available freely that, that can be used. But for me, it's about gathering evidence from multiple sources. And I think that this is what you'll see in all of the the research on evidence-based practices using multiple sources and appraising their value and I think that this is probably where we can extend our evidence base a little bit more so that we don't fall into that fads and fashions trap so thinking about what is you know your practitioner experience and um, but also the practitioner experience of others what do your stakeholder stakeholders think and um, what are those individuals who have an interest in your business have to tell you about your business what does the organizational data tell you? So what are your staff saying? What are your customers saying? Um, and how can you evaluate the impact of the things that you're doing? So what's the kind of current state of play and how would you like it to be different? And then also don't forget the academic literature. What does the latest research say about the, the specific topic, whether it's job crafting or well-being, um, that can help you to guide the decisions that you're making? But that can be confusing because a lot of what you'll be reading will be contradictory and confusing. And so you need to use your critical thinking ability, ability to make sense of that. So how trustworthy are the sources? And um, is it good quality evidence? Is it things from a single organization or single studies? Is it, are you bringing what you did in your last job and thinking it'll work in this job? Because often that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> thinking about, you know, is, is it collected, is the data collected at one point in time? Is it a collection of studies and experiences that you can use? And also think about how you can bring in others to the decision making process or so other academics and um, other practitioners. And I think this is really about due diligence, applying logic to the decision making process prior to just selecting a solution that's going to plug a gap or fix a problem. Brilliant. Wow. What amazing um, answer there. So like, so it's around being really kind of critical about the different types of evidence you can collect, how you praise the quality of the evidence, maybe getting other people's um, opinions and views on that evidence as well. Um, yeah, and maybe definitely. encouraging ourselves not to be um, lazy in terms of assuming that just because something's happened somewhere else, it's going to apply to your organization, either something you've done yourself or maybe you read about in a case study or a magazine. So that's really yeah, good. Yeah, that's right. Um, examples. Brilliant. So the second question we're going to ask you, and we know obviously in terms of uh, supporting graduate careers is something that you're very passionate about and have a lot of experience in doing. And specifically relating to job crafting, what do you think that graduates should know about and how can they kind of apply job crafting um, in, their, in their early careers? Mm. I think we can't get away from the current situation that we're in, can we? So no one knows what the job market's going to be like and what jobs are going to exist and what they're going to look like in the future. And that can feel really scary, particularly if you're coming to the end of your degree now and you were hoping for things to be different from September. But I think that this is a really good opportunity for graduates to think more broadly about their employability. Um, so there's lots of research that suggests that job crafting links to employability and that individuals who craft the roles tend to feel um, more secure about their employment inside and outside of organisations. And so their perceptions of, employ of their own employability are elevated if they can craft their roles. And I guess if we follow that argument through, there's potentially some things that graduates can do to sort of protect their employability and enhance their career sustainability. So the skills you're learning now, you can apply them to your career throughout. Um, okay. my, my own professional doctorate suggested that individuals can craft their career as well as their job. So it's not just about the job that you're doing, but it's about thinking about your whole career um, collectively. 
And I think there's probably four things that I would say are quite important. One is about knowing your value. So don't dismiss the learning and experience that you've got that could be valuable for organisations. I think there's a tendency um, to sort of dismiss the theoretical knowledge and think it doesn't count. But, you know, how fantastic is a combination of someone who knows the theory and someone who knows the practice and they can have a discussion to kind of work through. Wow, um, so yeah. bring, bring your theory to your, to your employer. What experience do you have that you can offer? So this could be to a new employer or it could be to your existing employer. And often employers, I think, don't know what graduates can do, what skills they have, what they've learned on their degree. So there's a responsibility there for you as a graduate to tell them. Um, you can use social media. It's never been easier, really, has it, to get your opinion um, out there. And um, so, you know, for example, in relation to evidence-based practice, if you've been learning about evidence in your degree, can you share some evidence with an organization or with multiple organizations using social media that might get them interested? You know, what's the evidence on well-being interventions, for example? Can you share that? I think the second thing is don't be overly focused on job titles um, and think about your job search behavior. So if you want a new job or you want your job to be different, don't spend all of your time just looking at, for job titles on job search websites. I think, yes, that's a great strategy, but it's not the only strategy. Think beyond job titles. Think about, um, you know, the content of a job. What does the job and person specification say? But also, can you, in the current job that you're doing, can you get a little bit more experience? Um, another thing is networking. So not just networking events, but also the people in your network. Can you harness the support of individuals that you already know? Um, does someone that you know work for an organization that you're interested in, for example? Um, can you get experience? Can you ask for some experience in, in that way? And you will already have a fantastic network. It's just about being aware um, of who those individuals are that are currently in your network. And I guess finally, it's about opportunity and you can gain experience in lots of different ways. Sometimes, yes, it's by moving jobs, but sometimes as we know in job crafting, it's about getting more out of the job that you're currently doing. Can you ask for more challenging tasks? Um, can you change how you think about your role? Perhaps you're working in, I don't know, in retail. Um, there could be human resources or marketing functions and there might be opportunities for you to get a little bit of experience to shadow someone um, or to offer some value in those areas as well. So I guess be open-minded and remember that a career is such a cliche, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, I love that. So the idea of looking at the longer term aspect um, maybe thinking beyond job crop into career crafting and those exactly. four tips that you could have talked about about building your values around um, making the most of your networks and relationships around trying to uh, make the most of your of the job that you've that you've you've got and to kind of trying trying new things it's it's yeah they're really really helpful advice there thank you so much thanks so much thank for your you time, no thank worries you. thanks